All right, so the SHSAT is the Specialized High School's Admissions Test. So it determines admission into the specialized high schools. Okay, so that's true for all the high schools that are specialized in New York City, except for LaGuardia. Okay, LaGuardia is, um, is an art school, so it's based on your ability. But the other specialized high schools, the way to get into it is to do well on the SHSAT. All right, so what's on the SHSAT? Well, it's the same things that students have been tested on since third grade, math and ELA. Okay, yeah, the questions are obviously gonna be more difficult on the SHSAT than they are on the state exams because we have to create some separation, right? So if, uh, if everyone does extremely well on the test, if it's easy, uh, you're not gonna be able to make a separation as far as who should be accepted into schools and who shouldn't. So it is very difficult. It's, uh, it is more difficult than the state exams than what the kids are used to, but it's the same material. All right, so the test itself is a three hour test. Uh, and it's half English, half math, okay? But the students could take the test in any order they like. So my advice is that if you're better at English, do English first. If you're better at math, do math first, okay? And the reason is because uh, you wanna make sure that you answer all the questions uh, on the section that you're good at, okay? You don't wanna run out of time and not answer questions on your best section because you're gonna, you're gonna miss out on potential points. All right, so since we mentioned scoring, let's go a little bit further into scoring. Okay, so the test is gonna be scaled based on the number of questions you get correct. So uh, each section is graded individually. So the English section is gonna have a score, the math section is gonna have a score, then they get added together and you get your score, uh, which will be uh, determined for the cutoff to get into the schools. All right, so something that's important is that uh, we should take a, a little bit of a look as far as how that works. So forget about uh, scaling right now. Let's just say on one section you get 80% correct and on the other section you get 80% correct. Okay, so your average for those two uh, sections would be 80, right? So 80 and 80, the average is 80. All right, so let's say someone else takes a test and uh, they did 10% uh, or they had 10% uh, points less than you. So they had a 70 in one section, but they did 10 higher in the other and a 90. So 70% in one section and 90% in the other. The average of both of those is also 80. The average of 70 and 90 is 80. So both of you have the same average. You both have an 80 on the test. Okay, but the student who, uh, who scored a 70 and a 90 uh, could actually end up with a higher score than a student who scored an 80 and an 80. Okay, and the reason is because since the test is difficult, when it uh, starts to get scaled, the, uh, the more questions you get right, you start to get more points for each uh, correct question. So uh, maybe going from uh, 30 questions correct to 31 questions correct, you might get an additional three points, five points. But then if you go from, uh, uh, say, 48 correct to 49 correct, that one extra uh, correct answer might be worth seven or 10 points. It depends on each year, the scale is a little bit different. But the point is that uh, you're gonna get a higher score if you do extremely well in one section than if you just do average in both. Okay, obviously it's better to do really well in both because you'll have an even higher score. But what I want you to take away from it is that you shouldn't be discouraged from taking a test if you're not good at one of the sections. What you should do is work on improving the one you're better at and get it as high as you can and also bring up the other score, but don't, be discouraged from taking the test, prepare for it, and give it your best shot.